One of the greatest texts in the world, and what is known as a Nididyasana text. Nididyasana means a text that one comes across after the pale of enlightenment or just on the cusp of enlightenment. And that text, as you all probably know, is the Ashtavrakra Gita. Now, I've done many videos on the Ashtavrakra Gita, and this is another episode in this series. And this verse I'm going to explore today is a metaphorical verse in relation to how a master relates to the world and how they actually behave in the world. Now, this may seem ironic to some. It may seem peculiar, this verse, but it's something for us to think about and not something for us to take actually literally, but something for us to take metaphorically. And it represents something a lot deeper. So without further ado, Happiness belongs to that master idler to whom even the closing and opening of the eyelids is an affliction and to none else. So as with a lot of verses in the Ashtavrika Gita, this is a very paradoxical verse because in the verse it states that happiness belongs to that master that even closing and opening the eyelids is an affliction. So it's painful. Now, again, as I said, this is not meant to be taken seriously, but is sort of gearing us and orient our awareness towards something much deeper. Now, first of all, master idler is in reference to someone who is self-realized. So an enlightened sage, someone who has realized the Atman, the undifferentiated consciousness within all of us, which is identical with Brahman, the ultimate reality of existence. So someone who has had a complete dissolution of the self. Now, self here not meaning in the Atman, but a complete dissolution of the ego, I should say. And so that's who a master idler is. Now, a lot of us will probably think that being idle is something negative, but on the spiritual path, that sort of path of non-doing, so in Chinese, they would say Wu Wei, or in reference to the Bhagavad Gita, we find the Sanskrit Nishkarma Karma, which means not being attached to the fruits of one's actions. And in the story of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is pleading with Arjuna to go into war to battle against his cousins. And Arjuna doesn't want to fulfill his own dharma, his own duty. And so he needs to get out of his own way. And so that means he has to get out of this sense of doership in his mind and come back into the heart of existence, which is the Atman. And from the Atman is complete silence, tranquility. And from that place, everything is done, even though there is no person doing the actions. And so that's the mentality of a master idler, of someone who's self-realized. They may appear to be doing actions because we see them physically and mentally doing things, but inside their mind is completely absorbed in the Atman, in the self, in the undifferentiated consciousness. Consciousness. They still behave like us, mere mortals, but they are not a hostage or a victim of their own persona system, their jiva. They are not a victim of their own ego. So essentially, a master idler is completely inactive, and they even feel the little non-volitional activities, such as closing and opening our eyelids. And so the point here, metaphorically, is that these little movements and these little actions from the sense of doership are limited. They are coming from a limited place. They are not coming from the absolute self. They are coming from a sense of doership, a sense of ego. And so the master is saying that even these little movements are painful and limited because we are coming from the jiva. We're coming from this ego system. And so that's where all suffering arises from. But once you're free from those activities, those little volitional movements, just the general activity of the mind and the body, then you are completely free and liberated in this life. And that's where we come to the next part of the verse where it says, and to none else. What do they mean here, and to none else? Basically, what this line means is to be truly happy, one has to be absolutely free from all physical and mental activity. So you need to be completely detached from that physical and mental activity. That's the essence of this passage. And that's what the Master Isla is trying to illustrate in this verse, is that we too can be free in this life, but we have to detach from this physical and mental activity that often define the jiva, the ego. And so it's only in that process of down-regulating the door of actions and the thinker of thoughts that we come to understand what the master idler is trying to illustrate in this verse. And so the job for all of us 
is to come back into that heart and to understand that all is the Atman. All is Brahman. And from that place, you can continue to live your life and people will see you doing activities, speaking to other people, but inside your mind is completely submerged in the Atman, in the undifferentiated consciousness and in the ultimate reality of Brahman. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti.